Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, not Slim Shady. And I'm sad, oh, she lost, but remember, they were number two, or whatever you want to call them. And AP Podcast 11.1 .1 about solutions is starting now. So you've got to learn about solute, solvent, solution, hopefully you remember that. Solutions in different states, which might surprise you, this is the exclamation point. Missable, what that means, which means, that's too loud. Missable means that um, it is dissolvable, right? Dissolvable for liquid in a liquid. So like if I have H2O in liquid alcohol, that would be missable. You wouldn't call that soluble. Um, solution formation with Hess's Law. And saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated, dilute, and concentrated. Solution suspension cooler, and let's keep on going. Parts of a solution. Parts of a solution are based on the amounts, typically grams. Right? Um, solvent is the biggest part, biggest part. Solute is the smaller part, and the solution is all of it. So if I want to make myself some Kool-Aid, there's a Kool-Aid man, oh yeah, he has a big happy mouth, and he has a little picture on him, and he's colored red or whatever it is. That's the worst Kool-Aid man I've ever seen. But um, what you have is it has water, it has Kool-Aid powder, and it has sugar, sugar. Okay. So the biggest part is going to be the water. The smaller parts are going to be the powder and the sugar. Okay. So when you dump all that stuff in, it might be 90% water, 3% powder, and 7% sugar by mass. Let's get the idea. Various types of solutions. Remember, solution here, miscible, I want to say again, is by the liquid, and a liquid is called a miscible. So different types of solutions. Remember, a solution is any homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous equals a solution. So um, if I have air and natural gas, I have a gas and a gas, and then that's a gas. Okay, so I'm supposed to be a gas in a gas. Okay. Vodka and water or antifreeze would be a liquid and a liquid and this would be the one that would be miscible. Brass is a solid and a solid that is called an alloy. You should also be familiar with the term alloy. It is called a solution because it is a homogeneous mixture. Carbonated water is where a gas is dissolved in a liquid. Seawater sugar solution is where a solid dissolves in a liquid. This is the most common. This is what we're most comfortable with. Hydrogen and platinum exist. I just don't deal with it. I mean, it exists. We just don't see it much. Just know that it's possible. You can't have a gas dissolved in a solid, in a homogeneous form. So how do solutions form? First, the solid, so I've got, and then I've got water. Let's say I'm dissolving it in water like this guy right here. Of course, pretend my ear attached. So step one, solid bonds are broken. Step two, solvent bonds are broken. Really? Yes. These water molecules have attractions. What kind of attractions do you say? Well, they are dipole. No, they are H bonded to each other, so it's pretty significant. Now, it's not that it's one and then two, this is kind of, oh, this could be two and one, but basically you have to break those apart. The other thing that has to happen is solute to solvent bonds form. So if I have a little square thing here, and it's going to form a attraction with a water, that is where it's going to happen once this other little guy is broken. And so I use attracted to the side. So it's exothermic only when bonds form. So which is exothermic, only solute bonds to solvents. Now, bond might be too strong of a word, but attractions form is probably better. I don't want you to think it's an ionic or a covalent bond, but there are attractions that form. Here it is visually. Solute. Break it up. That was positive. Delta H. Okay. Solvent. It's attracted to each other. Oh, I like you, red dot. I like you, red dot. And then what happens? Broken up. That would be a positive. Okay. Step three. I kind of like you too. I kind of like you too. I kind of like you too. This is negative because bonds are forming. Okay. So delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 is the delta H of the solution. So you can see where sometimes it is positive and sometimes it is negative. This is from the book, by the way. If you look one chapter 11, there are a couple of things in the book you might want to get. This is also from the book. I forget which figure it is. Maybe like 11, I don't know. I'm making up a number. 11 dash something. Um, so why does like dissolve like? The reason why like dissolves like, and we reference this in your book, a little easier. Delta H1, which is solute. I'm going to label this because I forgot already. Solute, solute. This is solvent. 
solvent, and this is solute solvent. So basically, what happens here is this would also be negative. I labeled one thing negative. Negativo, negativo. These will always be negative because they're small. So polar solvent, polar solute, right? So it's large because you're breaking polar polar. Large breaking polar polar. Large breaking polar polar. Heat of solution will be will be small solution forms. But remember, negative is favored. But this is small in the solution forms because the other there's another factor that takes into account which is entropy. So it's favored if as long as it's small, you'll get a so solution. Okay. So large positive, that's the only time you get a no. Large positive, no. So if you get it small, or if you have a large negative, which you wouldn't really ever have, but you get the idea there. So polar solvent, notice here's my solvent. Because it's polar, attractions are strong, lots of energy to break. Nonpolar, nonpolar, that means weak, weak, small, small. Okay. Nonpolar, polar, oh look, polar solvent, that's a strong bond to break. Factors that affect solubility. The nature of the substance, which basically is the polarity. So some things dissolve because polar attracts polar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pressure affects only gases. Yeah. So and if pressure goes up, solubility of a gas in a liquid goes up. Okay? Only for gases. Um, temperature, if temperature goes up, solid in liquid usually goes up. If temperature goes up, gas in liquid always goes down. Okay. And I like to think of it as, you know, if you're heating up the thing, you have more motion in it, and the density part, the gas, anytime the gas gets to the surface, it's going to leave. So the solubility is going to decrease. Concentrated versus dilute, there should be some qualitative questions you should be comfortable with. Dark Kool-Aid versus light Kool-Aid. Dark Kool-Aid would be more concentrated um, because more solute means it has more stuff in it. This can be seen more chemistrically speaking by our Beer's Law of A equals A, B, C. Um, the more absorbance something has, the bigger the concentration has. Not so sweet sugar water versus sweet. Can't do that with Beer's Law because it's not a colored solution. But if it is sweet, that would be more concentrated because it has more solute sugar in it for the whole thing. Three molar is more concentrated because it has more solute per um, solvent or per solution. And 100 milliliters versus 400 milliliters is equal. Amounts don't change concentration. Remember, concentration is a ratio of solute over, depending on how you look at it, either solution or solvent. I'll put solvent this time. I'll even tell you which one it is. So if it's molarity, it's solute over solution. And if it's molality, look how I wrote in italics, it's solute over solvent. You should be comfortable with those. I'm sure you're very comfortable with them. Is there an upper bound of concentration? Can I have a 50-pound salt lick, which is a big brick of salt? If I have 5 milliliters of water, will the salt lick dissolve in 5 milliliters of water? Is there enough around the concentration? Yes. Okay? Because then you just have a little bit of a wet salt lake. This is my example because my neighbor puts out a salt lake so that, so here's Mr. Fowler's wonderful house, the neighbor's wonderful house, here's the busy road in the back. The neighbor puts a salt lake because he likes to see Bambi come. Oh, look, there's Bambi! Or Bambi's father with antlers, or a moose or an ant or whatever that is. Comes with the salt and then bounds back over the road unless it is hit by a car or, I live in Indiana, a pickup truck. Or I guess that's a semi, but you get the idea. Um, so is an upper bound of concentration? Yes. Saturated means it is full. As much solute as possible. Not as much solute, and this is the key word, dissolve. as possible. Dissolve as possible. Okay. So that means you have as much dissolved as, fast as possible. Unsaturated is not full. So not as much as it could possibly hold. Okay. 
super saturated. Here's the solubility graph. So this is the solubility um, in grams of solute per 100 grams of water. This is the temperature. Notice how it changes. Um, these things going up are solids. The things going down are rare and typically gases. So although this is not a gas, this displays the curve of a gas because it goes down. So supersaturated, here's how to make it. Okay? You make a supersaturated solution by heat it up and saturate it. So let's say that I have 140 grams of uh, KBR. And I dump it in. There it is. How much would dissolve? Well, only 65 grams would dissolve. Well, that's not a good example. Maybe I'll say that is, um, instead of KBR, so it's KNO3. KNO3. I guess I wrote that again. Good. I'm so proud of myself. So we'll say that, what is this? Say that 30 grams dissolve at 20 degrees Celsius. But then I heat it up to 80. Well, at 80 degrees, all right, at 80 degrees, it's unsaturated. So notice my KNO3 line is over it. So it's dissolved now. Then what I do is I slowly cool it down. And you would think it would precipitate out, but sometimes it doesn't for some things. So you'd think it would precipitate out, but it wouldn't. So at 40 degrees, it should only hold 65, but it holds 140, which is crazy. The way you test for it, if I drop in one crystal. If I drop in a crystal, what happens is all of the extra precipitates out. Extra precipitates out. Not all of it, all of the extra. So if I dropped in a crystal and I was right here at 40, it, I would not have 140 grams chunk into a solid and fall out. I would have 140 to what I said that was 65. So I'd have about 80 grams chunk out and fall out. Okay. So remember, if I ask how to make how to make it, heat it up, saturate it, cool it down. To test for it, you drop in a crystal. This is not how you make it. If I say, how do you make it, and you tell me to drop in a crystal, you'll get it wrong. And my example is you test for AIDS. So imagine if the way you tested for AIDS for George is, all right, come here, George, I'm going to inject you with AIDS. Then I'm going to give you the antibody test. Well, that's not very smart. Of course, we get a positive test. Almost solutions. Suspensions have big particle size. I'm putting this in parentheses, solute. Because it's so big, it will settle out over time. If it settles out over time, that means it is not homogeneous, because over time it will settle. So that is not a solution. Colloid has medium-sized particles. Medium would be bigger than, than a solution but smaller than, than a suspension, than suspension. And those particles still float, so they don't settle, not settlers, but they are still considered heterogeneous. They are heterogeneous, in case there's confusion about that. Um, and the way you can test for this, and the way you can test for this, is they display the Tyndall effect. These are the only ones that show the Tyndall effect. And we're going to show the Tyndall effect tomorrow. Um, I brought in some jello. So if I have a beam of light, and I take a laser beam, and you can't see a laser beam, and I put a piece of paper over here, and I shine, I have a green laser. So I, beep, I have a green dot right here, and you don't see this dot right here. Now, if I had the, if something had the Tyndall effect, you still wouldn't see it through the air because air is not a colloid. But if I'm shooting it through jello, jello is a colloid, so I would see the beam of light there. And I wouldn't see it anywhere else. I would also see it over here. Because the particles are just big enough to, to reflect it. Okay. A solution, by the way, is homogeneous. Review solutions are not always solids and liquids. So you need to know that. You need to be comfortable with that. Solute and solvent is weird with liquid and liquid, so make sure that the solute is just the one that is more, or, or the one that is less. So if I have liquid and liquid, it's hard to tell. Solvent is the thing that there's more of. And AP chemistry usually does it by mass. Energy is involved in dissolving. I'm sorry, is involved in dissolving. Some things are endothermic, some things are exothermic. 
test and make saturated, unsaturated, you need to do testing it, and making it a saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solution. Which I want to say, if you have a solution, if solid is on the bottom, then uh, if solid is on the bottom, then it is saturated, not supersaturated. Test the colloid with the Tyndall effect, and that is it. So I will say toodles, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye.